<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> from John's Furniture Repair in an, the shop with another project today. And it's this beautiful wicker rocker and it's a family heirloom. And we're gonna be doing a pretty big job which is replacing the entire weave because it's pretty broken up and uh, needing a total refresh. So let me show you some details. Okay, so what you see here is what you get. We've got giant holes in the weave and uh, the paint is wearing off everywhere. Big giant hold here along the arm. It's all broken up and sorry, my rolly cart's really noisy. Anyways, looks okay here. I've got a braid that uh, hides the seam there everywhere. That's in okay condition, but it is broken back here where it's connected. And everything's just looking really tired. We do have some loose um, rockers here and this chair is a pegged um, dowel in here. So I just did a test to see if that would come out nice. It is coming. And uh, this chair was painted at some point back in its history and I asked the customer if they wanted it to be back to the original with wood and they did not. So unfortunately, this brown color is what we're gonna be putting everything back to. So I'm sorry if that disappoints you. It disappoints me too. But I thought it would still be an interesting video because replacing an entire weave on a chair does not exist on the internet. So. Uh, getting this on film is something that will help other people deal with the same situations. So, first off, we got to get the braid off and get the entire weave loosened up and off. So let's get on the workbench. After growing up in my dad's restoration shop and learning everything he knows, I'm continuing on with the business in my own shop. And after 25 years, I can truly say, I love this job and I just have to share it with you. Whether it's a priceless 300 year old hand carved piece of history or just an ordinary table or dresser, I pour my heart into each and every piece a customer brings me. I'm Trenna and this is John's Furniture Repair. Okay, so I've got the chair up here on the workbench. We're just gonna start getting this uh, braid off that's bordering everything. So it's usually tacked on with a couple of nails everywhere. I'm just gonna try to loosen those. It'd be nice to save as much braid as possible. And because we're not saving the weave anywhere, I'm not gonna be very gentle with it. Uh, it's important to save time where you can. Yeah, so they're barely hanging on there still. It'd be pretty easy to get it all off. And it is pretty brittle, so it might be a good idea just to replace the braid as well. Anyways, um, so you can see that underneath the braid, it's kind of like a tacking strip here. And they've nailed this weave onto the frame with this little tacking strip and it's uh, most likely just a piece of cane which isn't the greatest tacking strip as you can see it's split in half so um, I don't know if I'll be doing that again I think it'd be better to use something else but I'm not sure what thin wood's just gonna crack in half so it'd have to be a different material not wood so um, just gonna take as to get this whole section off of the whole chair, I have to take off this front section, even though it's in really good condition and uh, probably wouldn't need replacing, but I have to get underneath, if you can see here, because uh, where this chair arm goes down into this part, 
I need to be able to wrap this part first before uh, this part goes on. So I'll try to get this off without uh, destroying it, but I mean, I can't promise and I bought enough to do the whole chair. So we'll just give it a whirl and see if we can get these nails out first, holding on this whole section. Okay, so I've got this front section off um, and I had to pretty much demolish the board that holds on the weave here. This has to come off so I can get everything else off. It looked like it was in good shape, but at the really the top edge here, that's really worn and a couple of these fibers are broken. So I'll replace this section as well. Uh, I'm gonna keep the piece for a template so I can cut exactly the size I need. And I'll just make a new, um, board or cleat to hang on to the weave while it's going around. The braid came off okay, but it is kind of damaged right here at the turn. Say that. Okay, so we've got everything stripped down. Not much to look at now. Just a very simple frame. But I noticed something very weird. It's like it's growing out of the chair, like hair. <laughs> and I was like, what's going on here? And then I realized, okay, at some point, someone did some repairs. And what they did was drilled a bunch of holes in sections that were ripped, especially right here on the front of the arm and they glued in pieces of the um, the cane or the bamboo or whatever this stuff is, the rush, and uh, weaved it back into the chair. So a long time ago, someone was a genius and they repaired this chair in that way. So that's kind of cool. And this is, the stuff they've got on here is actual natural, rattan weave or bamboo or whatever this is and the weave that is on the chair itself is actually like a twisted paper you can see that there at the end so that's what we are going to be putting back on too and uh yeah so i just thought i'd show you that because that's i've never seen a uh, repair like that before and that's kind of cool if i ever run into this again i might try to attempt something like that, but it just pulls right out of the hole. I guess I just shoved it in there and then woven it back into the, the piece. Very cool. Anyways, I think I am going to um, take off this very not uh, tight webbing here and redo the webbing. I'll probably leave the metal just because uh, it's you can't restretch the webbing after um, the, the weave is back on because you don't have any way to stretch it there. So I'll leave the metal on just for security's sake if it does get saggy again in another 85 years or something and uh, redo this webbing with the actual uh, webbing stretcher so we can get some good tension on it. And yeah, so I'll just clean up the rest of this, probably paint it before we get everything going with uh, the new weave. I've got to get that soaking in the bathtub. I probably will go for that tomorrow. And uh, today I'll just do some repairs on the frame and get it painted and be all set for tomorrow. Okay, so before I get to working on the chair, it's a little bit annoying to have it rocking back and forth on me. So I'm gonna take these rockers off 
and they are pegged joints here. So I'm just gonna use a punch and push it out from one side. Hopefully it moves. Good stuff. And same thing on this side. And I don't know if this is the original. It, it should be, it would seem, but I think these are new pegs because they don't look as old as, as they should for being in the bottom of a chair for that long. This side has nails. So either the original or someone repaired it that with that method instead of nails, which could have happened as well. Alrighty, 10 years later, I finally have the right weave. I ended up ordering the wrong stuff and then ordering the wrong stuff again, and then finally figuring out what I was doing wrong and getting the right stuff. So here we are. It comes in a giant roll and it is supposed to be 55 inches long, which is pretty much what we need. So I'm just trying to uh, roll it out here and see if I can cut out a pattern from the old one. Not much of a pattern, but we'll see here. I'm not gonna cut out the arms completely, but I do need to get a strip for the front out of this as well. So I have to kind of figure out where that's gonna come from. So if I go from a straight edge, which I hope they gave me one here, About right there, and then I gotta leave a little extra to get that roll over on the top. And it's cutting it pretty close for width. Because once this comes out here, I'm gonna need all of that space there. I think I'm gonna be stretching it pretty thin. So it's still a gamble if this is gonna work perfectly or not or not, but I'm gonna keep as much width as I can. So it looks like I can probably cut it off at about that point. So I'm just gonna make a couple of uh, marks with a marker and uh, cut this out with a pair of good scissors. All right, so I got it all laid out here. I'm gonna spray it with some hot water that I filled up this kit or spray bottle with. And I also put a little bit of, um, fabric softener in there, which this is fiber. So are your clothes, same situation. I don't wanna get it too, too wet, but this is just gonna relax everything and help me cut without having pieces flying off of the weave to kind of stick it together a little bit. This is a good way to get a hand cramp as well if you're looking for ways to do that. Okay, I can't talk to you through this because it's stressful. So I'm just gonna put it on, bend it over the frame, put tacks on, that's what I'm gonna do. Laura's gonna help me. She's it's already helping fine. me mentally. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> I haven't done one like this before, so I just need to be concentrating on it. But I will leave you right here to watch every mistake. 
So enjoy. It's gonna be fine. Yeah, it is gonna be fine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she may be injured. No, I'll just get wet. Or that. <laughs> start with the bottom yeah Are you stretching it a little yeah should we like how should we do that? like pull, pull the it? sheet off and then we'll I don't know it's a thought <laughs> it's either gonna work or it's not because <laughs> it is stretching that I cut from the old one helps it to be around the side here. Because it is really just that getting it around the top. Yeah, that seems to be a little better. Okay, it is on, sort of. So where should we... Should we try to pull this in now? I have way more on the side than you. Okay, well I'm gonna stretch it, I think. Start working it over. Yeah, look at that. Oh yeah. Maybe that looks good. Yeah, that does look good. That looks good. More on this side, I think. <laughs> there we go. Just make sure I still have enough to pin that. Now we're we're gonna have a photo finish at the bottom now. Okay, that works. That works. That works. Yeah. So we need to push this out. As soon as it comes. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> I have my hand on the bottom here so I'm trying to run into things like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. That is really good. I put my finger right where you're pushing. <laughs> to do another one? Okay. Feel Look at that. Like that is getting somewhere. Yep. If only you had a clamp. <laughs> do I need to cut probably a little bit more in here? They came up the corner, pulled it in both sides, and there was like a little fold over. Ah, uh, I see. Yep. That way. Uh -huh. Is she going to stretch down one side? Stretch 
this way too. need to see two sides okay it's like 35 minutes of footage here already <laughs> okay so we are fighting with it it's looking good we've got it stretched everywhere we're a little bit short on that arm Laura's working her magic and reweaving a section and I'm just gonna go around and trim everything my hands hurt uh, that was hard I don't know how some they must have had bigger pieces because we were really fighting with not a lot of material this is the biggest chunk of this piece I could find and you know, even finding the exact weave is a miracle, to be honest. So uh, we did get it around. Teamwork makes the dream work on this one. Um, and we're just gonna start doing some details. It's a little bit crooked, a little bit pulled more in some areas. We're just gonna keep working it, pushing it, filling with it until it's uh, acceptable. So I'm just gonna be pulling all these out and we have that braid to go around everything to cover these staples. So I'm gonna be recycling the old braid and using some of uh, another paper braid that I have. So this is the original braid here. Most of it's in okay condition, some of it's damaged. So I'll be replacing that with a uh, paper braid that I ordered. So just so you know, we're still alive and it's going okay. I'll come back later. <laughs>
All right, so I've been working on the braid and just fitting that front panel and it's going pretty well. I've had a few areas I've had to kind of splice in the braid. I do have extra braid, but it's really not exactly quite like the old stuff here. You can see this is a four strand braid and this is a three strand braid and then some of the stuff that's old um, is paper. I think this is the original stuff here. And then the stuff that went around, I think was replaced at some point. This is an actual reed and it's a three strand as well. So all kinds of difference, uh, differences in, in the reed. So reusing the braid, you know, it has some cracks at the corners. So I'm just filling those with glue and just kind of cementing those down. I've got a couple of clamps just holding some areas um, and some frayed pieces to be able to reuse this braid. Down here, I did have to splice in a piece. And uh, we're having to end this kind of new braid here and just glue it in. So I've just got it clamped and then tomorrow we can do some shaping after it's all dried hard. So not a perfect situation because we don't have the material that we need. Like I don't have enough, put that on after, I don't have enough braid to put a whole new braid on and I don't really wanna use paper where it would rub because it would wear off pretty well. Um, so I'm trying to reuse this whole piece that goes around the top of the chair and uh, I've had to splice, I'll have to splice it in down there and I'll also have to splice it in up here where it was broken so it only comes to there's about this much of a section missing here that it comes to when it goes around properly so i'm just going to be adding another piece in here and splicing it in and making it look as good as i can um, and then we do have this piece that goes along that end so um, it's still pretty damp so it'll need a few days to dry but it's looking really good and it'll tighten up as it dries as well. And I think we've got everything in place really well, but lots and lots of trimming and detail and um, trying to, to make things work by using older material and reusing the material. So lots of little finicky details to get this thing uh, working well. And if you remember, we still have the rockers too that we gotta re-glue on after all of that is said and done. So when it is all put together, I'm gonna to send a picture to the customer and just confirm they do want it painted. And uh, he does have a 90 year old mother, so uh, she might just want her chair to be the way it always was. And then at that case, we would just paint it again, the same color. Uh, but we've got the seat all restrapped here. So we've got the pad that we'll replace on here as well. And then she can just have her cushion, which I think comes pretty high here. It's a very low chair. So I'm going to call it quits tonight. Leave the clamps on to dry so I can do some shaping on that braid tomorrow. And uh, we'll get it finished up and, and the rest of the braid on tomorrow. and they do still want it painted. She just wants to have it done the way it always was, so I can respect that. Um, so I've just got a piece of paper protecting the upholstered weaving here, and we do have that pad that we're gonna put back on afterwards. And I'm just gonna be using 
um, a spray can of paint, which is not usually how I do things, but um, with this, it's actually the proper stuff I would use. It's paper, um, it needs to kind of be a water-based situation because it really sticks to this kind of stuff. Whereas lacquer can be a little bit brittle in this situation, so uh, water-based finishes are a little bit more flexible in that department, so that's uh, their strength. So I'm just gonna be getting everything um, back to the brown color and spraying into all the little grooves I can. And then uh, it'll be finished. We've got the rockers glued back on and uh, everything's looking really good. So let's paint it brown. There it is, all finished up and looking like a old wicker chair the way it's supposed to. I did about three coats and I did three different colors of brown just to give it a little bit of dimension. Even though we're just doing a brown paint, we can still give it a couple of different tones. And just making sure to spray in all directions so you can get it onto the weave there. And there's our braid. Did our section that we had to splice in a piece there on the back. And then down here where we had a couple of joiner pieces to make up the length. There's our rockers with our pegs in the dowel joint. And the front apron piece, we put on a new braid, the paper braid, there. And then this side again, we did a couple of splices. That's the one that sticks out the most, but in terms of the whole thing, you really don't notice that. This was the original braid that we used and uh, just did a few repairs on it. And this is the cushion here. Not the cushion, sorry, the, the liner that goes over top of the strap work that we did. So that just sits in there. The old one was stapled in, but I don't really think it needs to be because it's fitting nice and tight. So it'd probably just be fine to sit there. You can take it off and clean it if you need to. So thanks for joining me on this one, guys. It was kind of a different little video, um, something that really does not exist on the internet. So I'm glad to put it out there if anybody ever runs into something like this. And uh, we got this weave from Frank's Supply and they're in California, not in Canada. So if anybody needs this weave, look him up. They're really great to work with. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video and you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. The link is in the description below the video. And for those of you who do that, always a big thank you to you guys and gals. And check out our other videos if you want to see more restorations. Cheers.